Welcome back. All right, so Saturday night, all that fun stuff, and seven games this evening, which is not very many for a Saturday night. But let's go ahead and jump in, talking about Toronto and the Detroit Red Wings. Now, this might be the, well, it's the lowest scoring game on this board. I'm thinking now on the other board. Ah, this is kind of the lowest scoring game of the night, although the Edmonton-Colorado game ties it. So it's Helbert versus Samsonov. 54 seconds in, the Leafs get a power play. I am aware that everybody's still calling him Samsonov. It's like he just he went to Toronto and became Samsonov instead of Samsonov. Uh, there's a shorthanded rush by Larkin. The power play's killed off, no shots. Toronto proved tonight you don't have to play a full 60 minutes to beat Detroit. Uh, Engvall has a tip shot, that's held. Hronik has a screenshot, that's held as well. The shots are only one apiece at five and a half minutes. Kubalik has a blast that deflects out. The Wings press eight minutes in. Uh, there's a near miss for Suter. The Leafs clear it out. Leafs get a power play. Eight seconds later, that power play is done. So that ends up with just, you know, nothing happening. Whatever's killed off. Uh, one shot for the Leafs with nine minutes left. And then at 11.57, uh, it's Wallman from Mata. So who saw that coming? Wallman with a goal there. Wings then press with four minutes left, 3.06 left. The Wings get a power play. Wallman has a shot that's held. Good cycle there by Detroit. And then there was a shorthanded rush from Kerfoot, which made it a four-on-four four for 15 seconds. So we roll over into the second period with the Leafs having 39 seconds left on a power play, down one nothing. 24 seconds in, Marner keeps his point streak going with his 500th point in his career. Uh, power play marker from Matthews and Riley. The Wings press to respond, teams exchange turnovers, and eventually Toronto gets the lead. It's Tavares from Yarncroke and Giordano at 637. Camps then denied as the Leafs press. We went a stretch of about six minutes without a whistle in this one too. Wings get a power play, that's killed off. Uh, the Leafs then press, that draws them a power play. Uh, Matthews blasts one high, that power play is killed off. So Matthews a little bit off the mark tonight, not a big deal. They're up 2-1 to one after 2, third period. Early press by Detroit. Rasmussen has a sharp angle shot. That's saved. The Leafs draw a power play. It becomes 32 seconds of 4-on-4. Four four, all killed off. Uh, the shots are 5-2 to two for the Leafs when everything's all killed off. Wings press. The Leafs block and rush. And Holmberg would make it a 3-1 to one game. He scores from Riley at 6-19. The Wings then press at 8 minutes, looking to get back into it. The Leafs would press with 8.5 minutes left. Nylander has a rush chance that's saved. The goalie's pulled with 3 minutes left. That leads to an empty netter. It is Tavares, who has scored a couple of times. He's up to 409 in his career. Marner and Hall with the assists at 18-21. Your final score is 4-1 for Toronto. They go to 24-9-7 with the win. Detroit drops to 16-15-7 with the loss. Uh, the shots in this one, 8-2 Detroit in the first period. Yeah, Toronto had a miserable first period. Toronto then outshoots Detroit 12-10 in the second and 15-5 in the third. They end up outshooting Detroit 29-23. Power plays Detroit 0 for 4, Toronto 1 for 5. Hits were 38 to 21 for Detroit. Helberg saves 25 out of 28. Samsonov saves 22 out of 23. And there's that bounce back. It's almost as if the speculation I read today about Toronto goaltending was overblown ever so slightly. All right, next up, uh, Minnesota. So the wild in against Buffalo. And as I said in the little short I put on the channel, this was so entertaining. And if you took my advice... Uh, you were highly entertained in the third period and in overtime. So it's Flurry versus Lukanen. Uh, early chances for both teams. Cousins has a shot that's held. The Sabres press at three minutes. The Wild are pinned down. It's all Sabres at this point. Not that they're getting a ton of shots, but they're getting a lot of zone time. Uh, then there was a net feed to Darlene that's picked off. The shots are actually five to three for the Wild with eight and a half minutes left, which surprised me because Buffalo was controlling a lot of the play. And they score on their fourth shot. It's Olofsson from Middlestad and Darlene at 13 minutes. Uh, 245 left, or 241 left, I should say. The Sabres get a power play. The Wild clear. They don't let them set up. They do kill that off. But it's one nothing Buffalo after one. No indication of the craziness that's about to follow. But second periods were crazy tonight. So, Felino wires one wide. Uh, the Sabres then rush. Kaprizov's denied on a break. Labushkin fires one high. Uh, there's a three on two for the Wild that's defended. However... Uh, the Sabres don't clear it out, and Duhame ends up burying a loose puck from Hartman and Dumba at 252. The Wild press for, or the Sabres press for a response, and then the Wild get a power play. That becomes 59 seconds of five on three. They score during the five on three. It's Kaprizov from Addison and Steele at 646. He wires that one through a screen. 
no chance for Lukanen. It is unfair to have a five on three advantage and have Kaprizov on the ice for you. Uh, Felino's denied, and then there's some pushing. The Sabres do kill off the five on four. There's a press by the Sabres at the half. It eventually draws them a power play, and they score early in it. It's Tage Thompson again from Darlene and Cousins at 10:30. He wires it far side on a good cycle. And then at 12.02, Darlene scores from Middlestad and Jost. Sabres then go back to the power play, and they score again. It's Cousins from Tuck. Tuck and Cousins at 13.55. And all of a sudden, uh, Buffalo has a 4-2 lead. Uh, Felino then couldn't tip one in close. However, Hartman would end up scoring from Goudreau at 18.45, and the Wild would press to tie it. Dumba was denied late in the period. So after two periods, this is just bonkers. This is why I had to do the short. I was like, you know, there were six goals in that second period. This is what people need to be watching. Uh, third period, there's a good press early, and Minnesota ties the game. It's Felino from Erickson Eck and Greenway, 26 seconds. Kaprizov hits the post, the wild press after that. Uh, Darlene has a blast that's held. Skinner fires one high on a rush. The wild will get a power play, and they score on it. It is Erickson Eck from Addison and Flurry at 748. And at this point, I thought, okay, now... Buffalo loses after I posted that. They were going to say, see, the jinx was on. I knew the whole time. So I thought, all right, I'm, I'm not really rooting for Buffalo, but they, they better come back. So Clegg has a tip, has a shot that's tipped wide. Strong back checking by the Wild, but eventually Buffalo does tie it. It's Darlene from Middlestad and Power at 1736. He just blasts it in, and we're going to overtime. The Wild control early. Kaprizov has a net drive that saved. Lukanen holds a boldy chance. There were a lot of chances here. Tuck was robbed on a 2-1-1, Skinner's denied, Brodeen's denied on a break, and then Olofsson scores from Krebs and Darlene at 441. I was pretty sure this was going to a shootout, but Buffalo proves me wrong, and they win 6-5 in overtime. They go to 20-15-2 with the win. Uh, the overtime loss, Minnesota 22-13-3. These are two of the hottest teams in the league right now. Uh, the shots in this one, 9-8 Minnesota in the first, 18-11 Minnesota in the second, 14-11 Buffalo in the third, 6-4 in overtime in favor of Minnesota. Ten shots in the overtime. Uh, final shots, 44-37 for Minnesota. Power plays, Minnesota 2 for 4, Buffalo 2 for 3. The hits were 21-7 for Minnesota. Buffalo's not very physical. Uh, Flurry saves 31 out of 37. He was getting serenaded by the fans at one point tonight. Lukanen saves 39 out of 44. I, I thought Lukanen had a good game. I know the save percentage doesn't show it, but I did. I thought he had a good game. I think Minnesota could have had uh, had more goals if if it wasn't for Lukanen. So, really fun game. Speaking of which, uh, Seattle and, and, and Ottawa actually ends up with more goals. I don't know how fun this one was, though. I know for Seattle fans it was. But just with the, the four games that were on, it felt like the tension went out of this one really quickly. So, it's Jones against Forsberg. Uh, Seattle's been outscoring their defensive slash goaltending problems this year. That got talked about a lot in this game as they did it again. Uh, but it's part of Seattle's game, especially on the road. Uh, early press by Seattle. The shots, though, are 3-1 for the Senators at 6 minutes. Seattle presses. They don't get shots out of that. Uh, the Sens need to watch out for turnovers. Uh, that was obvious early in this one. Dabrinkit couldn't bury one in close. And then on their second shot, Seattle gets on the board. So it's Bjorkstrand scoring from Schultz at 9.19. However, a little over a minute later at 10.21, Brady Kachuk answers from Stutzla and Shabbat. Dabrinkit then had a net feed that was blocked at 12.53. Seattle gets the lead back. It's McCann from Schwartz and Wenberg. He one-timed it. That's the fourth shot on net. So, yeah, tough one. Uh, Sens press with six minutes left. The puck goes the other way. Schultz, uh, it's deflected in. Uh, Alexiak and Sprung with the assists of 15-13. And even though that goal, I don't think, could really be put on Forsberg's shoulders, Forsberg was out and Talbot was in. Goaltending wasn't the problem tonight for Ottawa. Uh, Sens get a power play. That's killed off. But after the first period, it's 3-1 for Seattle. Second period, Burakovsky with a net feed. That's picked off. The shots, though, are 3-0 for Seattle four and a half minutes in. Sens get a power play, and they score on it. And it's the Sens bounce that gets them the goal. Stutzla gets that one at 635. And then Stutzla scores again to tie the game from Shabbat and Zub at 834. He buries the rebound. The fans are excited, and it feels like the Sens have dragged themselves back into this game. It's a tie. However, Sprung answers from Borgen at 856. While they're announcing the Stutzla's, Stutzla's second goal, Sprung scores. And now they have to do it again. It was on a rush. Uh, Seattle then presses for more. Crack and draw power play. That's killed off. 
Uh, we had a, a post for Vince Dunn there that would have made it 5-3, to three, but then Benier scores from Eberle at 14-13. Uh, Eberle then couldn't bury one from in close as Seattle just keeps going. 138 left, the Sens get a power play, so that rolls over into the third. And I'm jumping around, and I see Dolph Ziggler in an Ottawa Senators jersey, and I'm thinking, that's kind of weird. So, but it happened. Uh, a minute and 19 seconds into the third after the Dolph Ziggler weirdness. Uh, Dunn scores from Burkowski and Larson, which is good because Dunn's uh, fan club was there. Uh, it was weird. It was a blast from the point, and it's a goal, uh, and it just starts to really go downhill from there. Now, scary incident. The glass gets knocked out on the next play. Uh, it landed on a little girl. It looked like it landed on her head, uh, and immediately there's, there's security. There's people getting brought over. Uh, she would be okay. Uh, she got a puck. She got a stick for her troubles. Um, I would think that at some point in time, she'll get free tickets and she'll get to meet the players. But, uh, yeah, that, that took a while, uh, understandably took a while to get A, the glass fixed and B, make sure that the little girl was okay. Um, and then we restarted play and there was some suspicion that maybe this kind of a break, maybe it'll help Ottawa. Nope. Uh, Everly scores from Burakovsky at 455. So the Senators do answer. It's Stutzla from Batherson at 520. And that's the hat trick goal. And that's thanks to a turnover by Seattle. So this is where you're thinking, all right, well, they're down by three. But Seattle's given up leads before. We remember the L.A. game. Not tonight. Uh, Burakovsky buries a rebound. Eberle with the assist at 959. That makes the score 8-4. to four, And that was where I said, okay, unless anything dramatic happens, we're done with notes on this one. Seattle wins it by that score. They go to 22-12-4 on the season. For Ottawa, they're 18-18-3, and this is one of those disappointing setbacks that Ottawa's been going through. Uh, the shots in this one, 11-7 Ottawa in the first, 8-5 Seattle in the second, 9-7 Seattle in the third. Final shots, 24-23 for the Seattle Kraken. Power play, Seattle 0 for 1, Ottawa 1 for 3. Hits were 46-32 for Ottawa. Jones saves 19 out of 23. Uh, Forsberg saves two out of five, and then Talbot saved 14 out of 19. So unless both goaltenders had an off night, I'm going to say that A, Seattle's attack's pretty good, and B, the defense on the Seattle side, or on the on the Senator side, wasn't very good today. All right, next up, St. Louis. Uh, the Blues in against Montreal. Uh, and of course, earlier in the season, St. Louis lost at home 7-4 to against Montreal. So could Montreal do it again? Well, let's go through it. Bennington versus Allen in this one, early press by the Habs. Uh, Allen retrieves a stick and makes a save after. Uh, if the St. Louis player had noticed he was without his stick, might have scored that one. Um, so the shots are 4-1 to one for St. Louis four minutes in, so kind of a rough start for Montreal here. Pizzetta has a rush chance that's held. The Habs get six out of the next seven shots. They have some momentum going as well. Uh, Evans has a chance this glove down. The Blues get a power play. The Habs clear it out twice. They do end up killing that off. Uh, there's a press by the Habs with two minutes left. However, on a two-on-one, Brandon Saad scores. Uh, Shen and Barbashev with the assists at 19-25. And that was right after Dvorak was denied at the other end. So, big save at one end, goal at the other. And so after one period, it's one nothing for St. Louis. Second period. Uh, Evans to Armia, near miss. The Habs then press, and they score. It's Armia. Yep, now that he's got his first goal, he gets his second. And from here on, he'll score. Uh, Evans and Dodonov with the assists at 145, and that was after Jake Neighbors wiped out, so unfortunate wipeout by Neighbors there. Uh, Habs have some momentum. Shots are 2-1 to one in their favorite six minutes, but Torpchenko scores at 659. Yep, from Pitlick and Alexandrov. Uh, then there's a delay game call. That gives the Blues a power play, and then it becomes a 4-on-4 four four not long after. Caulfield fires one high and gets a post on the next shot. Uh, Suzuki's denied from the slot. Uh, everything was killed off, too, with that, that power play exchange earlier. Uh, Saad has a net drive that's defended. There's a high stick on Doc. That's a four-minute power play for Montreal. Uh, there was a post for Suzuki during that power play, and then it's Doc. The guy who gets cut ends up getting the goal. It's during the final minute of that four minutes of power play time. Suzuki and Dvorak with the assists at 16-15. Uh, Habs go back to the power play. Drew then has a shot that saved the rebounds held. There was a shorthanded rush by Barbashev, uh, which ended that power play. So we go to the third period. 36 seconds in, on a short press after a turnover, Caulfield scores from Suzuki. So all of a sudden, Montreal's 
got this three to two lead. However, uh, 229 Alexandrov answers from Rosen. Blues then get a power play and they score on it. It's Buchnevich from himself, I guess, at 442. It's unassisted, last I looked. Uh, but yeah, Buchnevich which gets the goal there. And St. Louis suddenly has a lead. They're up four to three. Uh, Dvorak couldn't bury a response, but Armia does. Yeah, Armia. There you go. It's third from Evans and Dodonov at 720. And then Anderson scores from Druant and Kovacevic at 11.34. They did initially give that one to Druant, but it was pretty obvious. Anderson, and it was a jerk move. It would have been Druant's first of the year. It was going over the goal line, but he hit it as it was going over the goal line. So it's it's uh, it's a goal for, for Anderson. He did what any player would have done in that same situation, of course. I don't mean that he's a jerk. Uh, so, yeah, it was initially awarded to Druant to get changed to Anderson. Uh, the goalie gets pulled with two minutes left. St. Louis can't tie it. They lose 5-4 to four in Montreal. Montreal goes to 16-21-3 with the win. St. Louis drops to 19-18-3 with the loss. The shots in this one, 11-9 Montreal in the first, 10-4 Montreal in the second, 9-6 St. Louis in the third. Final shots, 27-22 for Montreal. Power plays, St. Louis 1-3, for three. Montreal 1-4. for four. Hits were 21-12 for Montreal. Bennington saves 22 out of 27, and Allen saves 18 out of 22. Montreal takes both games against St. Louis, and now I need to change boards. All right, next up, Colorado in against Edmonton, and this is a huge surprise. So Montreal knocking off St. Louis was a bit of a surprise to me, but this one, this one ends up being a huge surprise. I uh, did not see this one coming. Georgiev versus Skinner, uh, the Oilers press at two minutes. The Oilers would end up getting a power play. Uh, there's a shorthanded rush by Comfer. He's stripped by McDavid. Uh, I do every now and then see the, well, McDavid doesn't play defense. He he does. He does come back. Uh, Nurse has a shot kicked aside. The power play's killed off. Three shots for the Oilers there. McCarr then has a shot that's held. McKinnon has a chance as well that's held. Uh, both goalies were sharp early in this one. The Abs get a power play. That's killed off. The shots are 7-5 to five Colorado with eight minutes left. Rodriguez is denied as the Abs press. McKinnon has a shot that's blocked. The Abs are in total control. Uh, Skinner denies McKinnon, holds on. Uh, the Oilers then get a power play and they score on it. At 15.37, it's Hyman from McDavid and Dreisaitl. It was a good cycle and they buried it. The Avs press for an answer. They end up getting a power play. That's killed off. The Oilers rush. It's 1-0 Edmonton after the first, even though Colorado outplayed them. Second period, McCarr's net feeds blocked. Hyman then had a rush chance. That saved. Now, McKinnon has a rush that saved. And I put up there too many shots. They were giving McKinnon way too many chances at this point in the game. Uh, and there were too many odd man rushes as well. Uh, crossbar for Ranton and on a three on one around that point absolutely illustrates what I'm saying. So even though the Oilers are ahead and they would add to that lead, you could see that there were some holes in their game that Colorado was very close to exploiting here. Uh, shots are four to three for the Oilers at six minutes. Hunt fires one wide as the abs press. Taves then has a shot to flex side. Deflect wide, I should say. Rantanen has a rush chance as blocker to side. Uh, there's another save on Rantanen, the abs press. So Skinner's really keeping this one afloat at this stage. The Oilers get a power play. Hyman is denied. Georgiev holds. The Islanders, or the Oilers score. There's a goalie interference challenge, orange and blue. So understandable to call my Islanders when they're Oilers. But at any rate, uh, it counts. So the goalie interference didn't work. Now, I'm not saying there wasn't goalie interference, but I'm going to agree with Louis DeBrusque. If it happened, it happened when the puck's already in the net. So Hyman scores the power play marker from Barry and Dreisaitl at 15.05. Uh, we then get uh, an Oilers power play because they challenged it and were wrong. And then we get 13 seconds of five on three. And it feels like things are really falling apart for the Avs. Uh, the Avs, Georgiev, they kill it off. Uh, they then play Deutschland. DJ, really. In Edmonton, I think Edmonton's where they always play uh, my Ramstein song, so I might need to go to Edmonton just to hear it. Or I could just play it here, I guess. It's probably easier. I'll save a lot of money and time. 16.3 uh, seconds left. The Abs get a power play, so that rolls over into the third period. There's a shorthanded rush by McDavid early in the period. Matt saved. Uh, the Oilers kill that off. Two shots allowed. So they're ahead 2-0, and it feels like they've gotten away with one because the Abs have been out playing them for large stretches of this game, Skinner's bailing him out. So Rodriguez has a blast that's held, and then McKinnon, doing what McKinnon can do, uh, he decides, I guess I'll do it, and on an end-to-end -end rush, he roofs it. So he gets Colorado on the board from McCarr and Rodriguez at 3.06, and it felt like it should have been later in the period than that, but it's not. The Avs press at seven minutes, some near misses there. We then get two minutes of four-on-four, four, 
And during the four-on-four, Colorado gets a goal. It's Hunt from Rodriguez at 819. I am aware Oiler fans didn't agree with the embellishment call on Hyman. I'm just saying it was a four-on-four goal for Hunt. Uh, the shots are 10-7 to for the Avs with seven and a half minutes left. With 649 left, the Avs get a power play. That's killed off. And then from there, it was pretty obvious we were going to overtime. So we get into overtime. The Oilers controlled it first. Uh, McKinnon steals one and rushes. There was a crossbar for Kulak. Hyman's absolutely robbed by uh, Georgiev there. And then on a rush, McCarr buries it at 209. So Colorado goes in and they beat the Oilers. They stop their losing streak. They go to 20-15-3 with the win. Uh, with the loss, the Oilers drop to 21-17-3. So your shots in this one, 15-7 Colorado in the first, 12-11 for Edmonton in the second, 17-10 Colorado in the third, and they outshot Edmonton 2-1 in the overtime, including the shot that matters. Final shots, 45-30 for Colorado. Power plays, Colorado 0 for 4, Edmonton 2 for 5. The hits were 24-21 for Edmonton. Your Gibb saves 28 out of 30. Skinner saves 42 out of 45. So Skinner did everything he could and uh, and almost got it there. So moving along. Uh, LA, the LA Kings in against the Vegas Golden Knights. So this one, uh, an, an interesting game. Uh, the LA Kings are really putting their game together. I have been quite impressed with the LA Kings this week. Copley versus Thompson in this one. Uh, Kopitar fires one wide early. Vegas gets a power play. Eichel has a blast that's saved. That's the only shot on that power play. The Kings kill it off. Lazat has a net feed this block. The shots are 2-1 to one for Vegas at 5 minutes, but they're not really getting a lot going. Uh, things get punchy behind the Kings net. The Kings end up getting a power play. There was a shorthanded chance for Smith. That was held. Uh, the power play is killed off. Uh, Fiala fans on one in the slot. The shots are 5 apiece with 8 minutes left. So again, they're not giving much to the Vegas Golden Knights tonight. Crossbar for Stone, and then there's a press by Vegas after that, but Fiala opens the scoring. From Lazat and Velarde at 17.02, it was a screenshot, no chance for Logan Thompson on that one. Deno then nearly adds another, and the Kings press to close out the period. So it's 1-0 LA on the road after one. Second period, Stevenson has a net feed that misses. Uh, Walker then at a wrister, that was held on to. Uh, shots are 2 nothing for the Kings at four and a half minutes. So this is very unusual in Vegas. Uh, the way they've been playing recently, they'd started to get their, their home game going. Uh, then there's a press by Vegas, but they're kept to the outside. The Golden Knights get a power play. Smith has a shot that's gloved and held. And then a shorthanded rush. Uh, Roy buries a rebound from Kupari and Kopitar at 9.27. And then the Kings finish the kill. That's the important part. Ayafalo misses wide on a spinorama. Roy misses wide, and, and Little's going for Vegas. That's Raw then. So it's Raw versus Roy. So, evil. Uh, but yeah, Raw misses wide. There's Little going for Vegas at this point. Uh, Fiala then makes it 3 0 from Dursey and Velarde at 16 26. So Velarde with two assists to this stage of the game. Uh, and he buries it in close on a good press. So again, I, I don't know that you can fault Thompson on that one. Vegas presses to answer, and as the period comes to a close, it is a quiet crowd in Vegas. I know there were some L.A. fans there, clearly not loud enough to make a difference to that noise. So we're going to the third period with it 3-0. Uh, Vegas is line shuffling, looking for any kind of magic they can find. Uh, they press, but they're not getting shots during that press. Eichel fires one wide on a rush, and then one deflects in off Arvidsson's nose. Uh, at 5.46, it's a goal. They don't ask you how, just how many. Walker and Deno with the assist there. Um, Kings press at seven minutes. There was an ugly crash into the board by Lemieux. He did exit. I would think has to be concussion protocol. Doesn't necessarily mean he has one. Just, yeah, you, you got to get him out of there. And with the amount of time left, it, it wouldn't have made sense to put him back in. Anyways, I didn't see him again after. Uh, stingy defense by the Kings in the second half. 447 left. The Kings get a power, or the Vegas, the Golden Knights get a power play. They make it a six on four. After the kill was over, while well, they still had the goalie pulled, Marcia so scores from Roy and Kessel at 1742. Uh, they pull the goaltender again. They're looking for that Vegas magic. Instead, Fiala hits the empty net for the hat trick from Lazat and Velarde at 1833. So Velarde with three helpers tonight, Lazat with a couple, and Fiala with the hat trick. And your final score is 5-1. to one. L.A. kind of spanked them. Uh, they go to 23-14-6 with the win. For Vegas, they're 27-13-2 with the loss. The shots in this one, 9-8 Vegas in the first. 11-4 L.A. in the second. 7-4 Vegas in the third. Final shots, 23-20 for L.A. It wasn't the most exciting game, but 
LA did what they had to do to win it. Uh, power plays, LA 0 for 1, Vegas 0 for 3. The hits were 44 to 23 for Vegas. Copley saves 19 out of 20. Thompson saves 15 out of 19. Aiden Hill goes in, saves 2 out of 3. I, I don't think it would have mattered who was in net in this one. Uh, Vegas just got shut down. It was an impressive shutdown. All right. Next up, uh, Boston. The Boston Bruins and the San Jose Sharks. So Olmark versus Reimer in this one. Early jump for the Sharks, but on their first shot, Boston gets a goal. It's Marshawn from McAvoy and Bergeron. Uh, Clifton then has a chance that's held as Boston's looking to jump on him. Power play for the Sharks, that's killed off, but the shots take a bit of a turn. It's 3-2 San Jose, five minutes in. But at 5.32 on the third shot of the game for Boston, they score again. It is Smith from Felino and Coyle, uh, but San Jose gets on the board not long after. On their fourth shot, Couture scores from Barabanov and Vlasic at 6.57. So Barabanov's been hot lately, so is Vlasic offensively, and they're both on the board there. Then the Sharks press to tie it. The Bruins press back at nine minutes. Sharks are blocking out when they're, when they're getting pressure from the Boston Bruins pretty well. Pasternak with a net feed. Carlson blocks that. Uh, Lindblom has a shot that's blocked. There's a trade of rushes at this point. McAvoy's denied on a wraparound. It's 2-1 Boston after one. Second period. Early press by the Sharks. Pasternak couldn't bury one on a fast break. There's a crossbar then for Marshawn. Uh, Hall has a chance to flex wide. The shots are 5-2 Boston at seven minutes. Uh, Sharks press at eight minutes. The Bruins are pinned down. The Sharks get in a change. Uh, Krejci ices it. It's a three three plus minute shift. It was up around four minutes. And then they're waiting. They're waiting because Boston can't switch guys off uh, after an icing. They tried. Forbert's on the bench. So because they tried the old switcheroo, that leads to a power play. Now, if you want to go big brained on this, Boston need a line change. And, and the question was asked by San Jose announcers, and I thought, well, that would be crazy, but maybe? Because Jim Montgomery will think outside the box. Maybe the Boston Bruins realize, we're not going to be able to clear this out. These guys are dead tired. Forbert, come sit on the bench. We'll take the delay a game call, and then we can put four fresh guys on the ice, right? So they the Sharks get that power play. That was killed off. There was virtually no looks at the net for San Jose during those two minutes. So did they do it on purpose? I don't know. Uh, the Bruins did press after it was done as well. Uh, Sharks, they'll go back to the power play. Bruins don't let them set it up. But after it ends, San Jose does tie the game. It's Ferraro from Benning and Nieto at 14.54. Shortly after that, Boston gets a power play. They score on theirs. At 16.45, it's Pasternak from Marshawn. He wired it top shelf from the slot. And so with that line back together, I'm not calling them that. Um, yeah, they're playing pretty well. 36.4 seconds left. The Bruins get another power play. So after that second period... They're up 3-2, to two. things look good, but it's a California game. Until it's over, I always assume overtime. Uh, so third period, the Bruins score, offside challenge on Lindholm's goal, and it comes right off the board. Uh, Sharks finish the kill, the shots are 3-1 to one for the Bruins at 3.5 minutes. I have to say, too, during that challenge, where they're like, well, we don't know, because after last night, no, he did, there was no tag up, so it was clearly, clearly an offside. So the shots are 3-1 to one for the Bruins at 3.5 minutes. They would press as well at 6.5. They had a good third period. Um, Hurdle tips one wide then as the Sharks are trying to push for the tie. But Pasternak wires one. No chance for Reimer on that. From Bergeron and Marchand at 9 minutes. So Pasternak basically takes it over and that's a two-goal lead for Boston. Sharks press with 7.5 minutes left with 6.48 left. Uh, the Sharks get a power play. That's killed off. Pasternak's shot is held with 2.02 left. That meant it was time for me to listen to shipping up to Boston. The goalie pull happens with 1 minute and 40 seconds left. With 26.2 seconds left, the Sharks uh, call a timeout. Uh, whatever they discussed didn't work. Your final score is 4-2. Boston goes to 31-4-4. Four four. We're 39 games into the season for Boston. They have 31 wins. They have 66 points. It's ridiculous. If they lost every game from here, they probably still would not finish last in the NHL. So for San Jose, they're 12, 21, and 8 with the loss. Uh, I did hear the announcers late in the game saying, you know, if they could score a couple here and send it to overtime, I'm like, don't you dare do this to me. So the shots are 12 to 6 Boston in the first, 10 to 9 Boston in the second, 13 to 7 San Jose in the third. Final shots 29 to 28 for Boston. It was nice to see Tara Sloan, though, for the San Jose announce team. Uh, power plays Boston 1 for 2, San Jose 0 for 4. The hits 27 to 16 for San Jose. Olmark saves 26 out of 28. 
Reimer saves 25 out of 29. It's not a great stat line for Reimer. I'm not going to put it on him. Boston, uh, they're, they're just so frustratingly good offensively. And they don't ever seem to get rattled by any adversity in game. It is remarkable to watch. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.